Uh, in today's video, I want to go through Tadej Pogacar, his bike change, his power data on his road bike, and also, first of all, his time trial bike, which I think there are a couple of details that people have missed out and I think are very interesting. Okay, so we're going to start from the front and we're going to move back along. So, obviously, first of all, pretty they stand out quite a lot, um, is the custom extensions. So you can see, like, a lot of people have vision extensions, but these look are unbranded. I, I'm not 100% sure who they are. Um, a lot of people make them, you know, they could be Watch Shop, Aero Coach, or all the people like that sort of, of make them. But obviously, this is incredibly more aerodynamic than um, like flat ones because you can see here, like, obviously, his arms are sitting straight on it. So it's flush um, and it's curved around as well. So the airflow is going to go around that. So that's that's really good. Expected, to be honest, if you don't have custom extensions like Adam Yates didn't, your team's not that serious about time trials. Um, we then go down to the front wheel, so you can see this is a Campagnolo Bora WTO, um, and this is a, will be an 80 mil deep wheel. Um, what's interesting about this, obviously, is tubeless. Um, here's going to be running a Vittoria Corsa Speed, I, I think, um, is what that says. There's the um, fastest tyre on bicycle rolling resistance by quite a long way. Obviously, weight on this part of the course wasn't too important. It was rolling, but the, the gains that you can have from running a tubeless tyre is really, really big. Um, then in terms of this base bar, you can see here, this is something Dowsett mentioned, that the drops here are really, really low. It's not flat. A lot of bikes, you know, it'll be like flat, so it'll be like sort of here. Um, but instead it angles down, which, okay, maybe is fine um, for most of the time. But obviously, and this allows them to have less spaces here, like less spaces where my mouse is there, um, which is good, maybe slightly better, I don't know, I'm 100% sure. But because this is further down, it means that climbing would not be very comfortable on that bars. Um, obviously, if you were maybe born on the TT by like Dumoulin, then it's okay. Um, another little thing here is that you can see if we zoom in a lot, these aren't aero quick release skewers. Um, and I think, I don't really know why they don't use aero quick release skewers because, you know, in reality, if he is a front wheel puncture, they're not changing the wheel, mate. They're just going straight on a new bike because trying to get a wheel in there to make sure that it doesn't rub on the brakes with TT brakes, it's not happening. So I think that's definitely a little gain he could have. Um, we're, we're now going to move slightly further back. And this is something I really want to talk about. Unfortunately, his pedal slightly uh, obscures it in this view, but we'll, we'll try and find another picture. This is a single chain ring. Um, my prediction will be a 56 or 58. I doubt he would go as big as a 60 because professionals are a little bit, um, how do you say, like cautious. Um, but you can see it's an error chain ring. So, you know, it's like, fits perfectly and I hadn't seen Campagnolo I don't think you really can get a single ring chain ring for Campagnolo um you know he's on standard EPS kit um but we'll, we'll, we'll try and find um a picture of like where you can see that there's no there's no front derailleur um this is a slightly better image um which we'll be able to find um which I think is pretty interesting because, as you can see here, no front derailleur there. Um, I think he might have a chain cat catcher on, but that saves, obviously, mental energy. You don't have to think about changing, but you're not going to change anyway. But the biggest thing is, is aerodynamically, it does change um, quite significant. Well, not significant, but it's like two, three watts, I've heard, um, from not having, uh, you know, the inner chain ring and the front derailleur. Obviously, the air is quite disturbed here already. You can see he's running a stages power meter on the carbon cranks. Um, again, people say they're not very accurate. Um, we can we can go into that at a later date. Um, obviously, overshoes look pretty good, textured on the leg, which is always good. Um, that's what we like to see. Obviously, paint job is mint for the Slovenian National Championship. And again, the 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 back um, disc wheel um, again is also tubeless as well. Um, which you know, disc wheel okay it weighs a little bit more. Maybe I think if he was doing the whole thing on this bike, he would have gone tubular. But because again, it's fast. He doesn't need to, there's no need. Um, so, you know, the rolling resistant gains. Um, saddle is a Pro Logo TT saddle, nothing special about that. Skin suit obviously is not his preferred one. It's a, it will be a Lecoq Sportif branded one. A dowel actually, they make them because I don't think Lecoq Sportif actually make like cycling jerseys. But you can see like just little things here, like on his, on his elbows, it's not really great. Um, obviously, that's wrinkles. You know, this isn't what he wants. He will have a custom. I think his, Kit is made by champion system, champion systems, something like that. They will have a custom skin suit, no wrinkles, no nothing. Um, he's got the Met Mantis. You can actually see some of his hair coming out. Um, and Old Hambini really rates the Met helmets because they have like a 
a lot of the newer ones do, but they have like an air vent here that will go in. And at the back, they have sort of like an exhaust tail. And apparently that keeps the air like really flowed over his back. But you can see here, like obviously there's a gap here. He's looking up, but but in terms of the airflow over here, very smooth helmet, perfect on the neck, which is really, really important for the airflow. Um, in terms of like the gap, okay, yeah, maybe he could go higher hands, but obviously, you know, the use I have a lot more rules than CTT. So if you was this is a CTT lad, his hands will be like up here. But again, I don't know if that's quicker. I think obviously lower is quicker to a certain degree, but power, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so pretty interesting TT bike. Um, I think the one by is, I mean, I, I've seen campanets go one by, but I haven't really seen anyone else do it. Um, so that's pretty interesting to see Tade do that. Uh, so now we're going to go over to his road bike. Um, so it was a big drama that he rode with no power meter. Um, I think, you know, do you want to ride with power on that? Like, it's going to help you a little bit. But again, like, you know, it's the end of the tour. You don't know what your threshold is, et cetera, et cetera. I think it is a bit odd. That he didn't record it for later, etc. But I mean, if you're going to win the tour, you probably don't really care about getting a PR on training peaks. Um, but in terms of the bike, nothing, nothing special. You know, normal carbon cranks, wheels like Bora Campagnolo Ultra 35s, pretty light. Apparently, the rim brakes generally get. Um, the guy was saying on the Bella News article that they generally get sub 6.8, so it's no, no dramas. Um, electronic again. Um, not going anything rogue there, uh, which is fair enough. And that's his normal power meter. And this is sort of a better view of the whole setup. He's got integrated bars here. He's got a normal Campagnolo brakes. He's got his normal setup. He didn't go for like a TT setup. He's got bottle cages on, which again suggests that, you know, he's not really caring about weight that much. Um, in terms of chains, I think they're just standard 5339, 1128 on the back. When you're going at full gas up here, you don't really need small gears. Um, and he, he does like quite out the saddle as well. Um, he did get rid of his visors, as you can see here, which is obviously just um, to do with the airflow. Um, like, you know, when you're going slow, you're going to sweat, the air won't cool it down. You know, he doesn't want, he wants to be able to see where he's going. I also at this speed, I mean, come on, I don't think a visor um, is going to help that much. Campanet said he tested faster without a visor anyway, and it cools him down so much that even if it was faster, it would probably be like a little bit, it'd probably be worth it being able to cool down. So that's Teddy Big Atch's bike setup. Um, bike change was really, really quick. Obviously, I can't share that footage, but look it up. It was really, really good. Um, the guy was opening the door before they came to a stop and was pretty much hopping out at like a couple K an hour. The bike seemed really easy to get off, which was obviously good. And as Lantern said in his video, I watched that video, it's good. He Tally placed his bike on the on the bonnet of the car. He looked really chill. He knew that, you know, I'm gonna lose three, five seconds here, but you know, I'm just as long as I stay calm, a little bit of recovery. People say you didn't recover three, five seconds, but you like you do a little bit. Um, and then mentally, I guess it's easier because you can pace the first effort. You say, I'm doing this numbers for the first effort. Then, you know, get off the bike, put up on the bonnet, uh, wait for the mechanic, hop on, and then you can go again. And I think Tade saying very calm, but I think Roglic had the the opposite issue. Um, so, yeah, if you have any more questions about his bike or anyone else's setup that you want me to go through, um, I'm very happy to go through it and um, talk through what I see and all the rest of it. So, anyway, cheers for watching. Don't uh, remember to subscribe and like the video, obviously, um, and we'll see you in the next one.